Wilson's. And, you know, I think that uh, your two guests from the Christians should be careful. I think they're going to be arrested quite soon because of the discrimination and, uh, and their own laws that they believe in, which are, you know, according to their own amendments, which they've broken in this program, uh, you know, whilst they're addressing us in this debate. So, Osama, I mean, from what Anjum is saying, maybe Sharia over democracy would, in fact, help the West. For this religion. First of all, he said Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Yes, indeed. 90% of Muslims in the Muslim countries, the 57 Muslim countries, like yourself, are ignorant of Islam. They can't even read Arabic. You yourself, I have a video on YouTube, you can go and watch it. You yourself don't even know what the word Salah means. You pray five times in Arabic every day, and you don't know what the word pray means, for heaven's sake. So yes, we have one billion and three hundred million Muslims cannot read one word in Arabic, but they're good Muslims. And the Muslim in the West, those who become a Muslim in the West, they all believe in the opposite of your Islam. Brother Injun, they all believe Islam is a loving, peaceful religion. They all believe Muhammad never killed anybody. They all believe Muhammad never engaged in any war against any country. You keep talking, Injun, I promise you, all the Western who believe in Islam for sure will leave Islam and come to Christ. Add to that, Injun, there are millions of Muslims all over the world, like Brother Jafar, millions of Muslims who can read the Quran, who can understand the interpretation of the Quran by Muslim scholars, much more than you can ever dream to know Islam, are leaving Islam every Day. I know hundreds myself personally who are doctors, imam, professors who memorize the Quran in Arabic, understand the Quran, and they left Islam and become a Christian. Now, I would love to, uh, Muhammad did escape from Medina to Mecca. Yeah, he escaped by night. Let me teach you something about Muhammad you do not know in Jim. He lived by night and he brought his own nephew, Omar, in his bed. So when the tribe went to kill him, it was not him in bed. It was his, his little big, big scaper helper. And uh, Muhammad escaped Mecca to Medina when he was 53. And then he came back to Medina when he was 62, kill all the Jews, kill all the Christians, he killed all the Jews who helped him for years in Medina when he escaped from his place and he became the militant man which we know today. And from this day, from the age 62 until today, there is no Jew in Saudi Arabia or in the Muslim world which the Muslims have the strong arm to do. Now I'd like to respond to this uh, ignorant uh, Sheikh Omar. Islam is truth. Yes, indeed. You know how? The earth is flat because that's what we learn in the Quran. And by the way, Muhammad told us in the Hadith that to go inside the earth, just to cross the thickness of the earth, you take 500 years. You ignorant, you idiot, and you're Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, who are ignorant. You can travel around the earth, the circle of the earth, the sphere of the earth, in three years, if you are 70 years old, walking slow. Tell this to your Muhammad. Muhammad told us that Adam was 90 feet long, 90 feet tall. Lord, have mercy on the stability and the ignorance of your Muhammad. Uh, you told us Jesus was a Muslim. I, by the way, there's enough error. Call me, email me, Yusama at the straightway.org, and I will send you many material, DVDs, hours and hours of error in the Quran. That is your Islam. Now, Jesus was a Muslim. No, my friend, Jesus was not a Muslim. You know how? Jesus never married a six years old child like your Muhammad when he married Aisha. Jesus was not a Muslim. You know why? Because he never married his own daughter-in-law like your Muhammad married Zain bin Tijash. Jesus was never a Muslim. You know why? Because he never had marriage for fun. That is adultery. That is a prostitution which you Lebanese Muslims practice every day. That you marry a woman 15 minutes for 20 bucks and you call this marriage the wife Musa in your Quran, Muhammad, and you're all Muslim practice this religion. Jesus was not a Muslim. You know why? Because Jesus never committed adultery with a married, the Coptic woman, as you read in your Quran, chapter 66, verse 1. Jesus was never a Muslim. You know why? Because Jesus never had an open door to have sex with every believing woman she offered himself to him as it was in your Muhammad case in chapter 50, verse 53. And, 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 and Jesus, I mean, I, I can go on and on. Uh, here we go one more time. Okay, real quick, uh, 30 more seconds, and then I have to turn it back to Pastor Joseph. Jesus did not kill like your Muhammad killed. Jesus cannot be a Muslim. The idea is that Alexander the Great was a good Muslim, and Jesus was a good Muslim, and Abraham was a good Muslim. That is the same lies given by Muhammad about the earth's flat. Huh? It's the same Muhammad who told you all these prophets were Muslims. You need to read your Quran one more time, Injun, one more time, Sheikh Omar, and compare it to the realistic truth about biology and chemistry and, 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 uh, and history and uh, moral, moral, all the Quran is a book filled of, of faith and book filled of error. I mean, Lord have mercy. 
You Thank watch. You. You need I, to have to, I have to cut you off. I know, again, we're, we're discussing a heavy topic. 90 minutes is simply not enough to go through everything. Maybe we can set up a future debate um, on more specific topics. I want to get back to, again, tonight's topic, the global impact of 9-11. Again, now we're coming to the 10-year anniversary. Within a few days, of course, opinions are no one's opinions are probably going to be changed within the next 15 minutes of the show. However, we do encourage the audience to call in if you have any specific questions regarding 9-11, regarding the global impact, whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, to call us here at 248-416-1300. Pastor Joseph, do you think that the Christian world now um, is up to speed on the teachings of this version of Islam, because we know that there are there is more than one version of Islam out there. This version of Islam that both Anjum and Sheikh Omar are preaching. Did you say the Christian world? The Christian world, not the not the secular leadership. Well, well, no, they're not. And and you know the Christians are ignorant of true Islam, and Muslims are ignorant of true Islam. Uh, you know the problem that we have somewhere here is very clear. You know when you get through all of the insults and the stupid, foolish talk about somebody coming in arresting us and all this kind of stuff. Of course, Anjum has to be afraid of that in England. But nevertheless, and Omar Bakri, you know, got deported. But let's not go there. You know, let's be above that. Anyone who looks at the New Testament, there's not one verse. You know, Anjum tried to bring Luke 19, which is a parable, and it's not even talking about Jesus, talking about the nobleman. Ridiculous. There's not one verse, one phrase in the New Testament, which is binding upon Christians, that tell us to fight, to kill anyone. Even our enemies, we are to pray for, we are to love, we are to share the gospel. In the Quran, if you can get through the double talk, Omar Bakri Muhammad's threats, as long as Anjum's, uh, and their rejoicing in September 11th and the death of almost 3,000 American innocent civilians, yes, Surat al Toba, kill the, un kill the Mushrikeen wherever you find them. Uh, fight the people of the book. I've been ordered to fight against the people of the book until they say there's no one but Allah and, uh, and that you keep up the prayer and keep up the zakat. Yes, of course. Throughout the Quran, there's hundreds of verses that, in, that tell Muslims they must fight and kill. Do Christians understand this? No. And you see, here's the last thing. I just want to say this. I don't want to take any more time. I just want to say this. It's so important. Anjum and Omar are listening. They know what I'm going to say is true. And it's simply this. Summer, I've studied Islam for 10 years. And, and the, the one thing that is the most confirming to me that Islam is false is people like Anjum and Omar who know what, what Osama said about Muhammad being scared for his life and putting his nephew in the bed and all of these shenanigans and being disguised and running out by night. They know all of that. They know Muhammad was killed by a Jewish woman. They know all of that. But they deny it. They hide it. They lie about Islam. If their religion is true, why do they need to practice taqiyya? Why do they need to lie to the American public in the West? They do that because it says in Surah 328, and this is where I'm done, let not the believers take those who deny the truth for their allies in preference to the believers, since he who does this cuts himself off from God and everything. Unless, here it is, unless it is to protect yourselves against them in this way, by way of precaution. But God warns you to beware of them. You see, some are, they're lying through their teeth so they can be in the West, so they can organize terrorist attacks, so they can undermine us through the cultural jihad. They know they're lying. Any one of our viewers, read the New Testament and then look at the Quran, decide for yourself. It's true. It says it in the Quran. Truth stands out from error. That's true. That's a biblical concept. You'll know them by their fruits. The New Testament says, love your enemies. The, the Quran says, over a hundred times, kill your enemies, strike terror, cut off their fingertips, cut off their heads. Very clear. They're lying. They know it. And that's the biggest confirmation that their religion is false. They have to cover up the truth about it because it's so scandalous and embarrassing and shameful. We don't cover anything in our scriptures and our Lord Jesus, who is God and returning again to judge the earth and to judge every man, Anjum and Omar included. Thank you, Summer. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. You know, you, you've prompted me to ask this question because, you know, we're all here to find the truth, to get the, to the bottom of the truth. I want to pose a question to Sheikh Omar. It's a very simple question. Have you, Sheikh Omar, ever... Uh, in your practice of Islam, put yourself in the position of, let's say, quote-unquote, devil's advocate and questioned Islam to strengthen your faith in Islam and to really seek if Islam is the true religion or if there are some loopholes or some holes in that faith. Have you ever tried that? 
Have you ever put yourself in that position? 